before you panic about AI, you should understand that there are four buckets of belief systems that people hold in relationship to AI. And you might be falling into one of those belief systems without even realizing it, causing you to be overly pessimistic or overly optimistic. And the objective of this video is to find a nuanced, balanced, integrated viewpoint that isn't overly pessimistic or overly optimistic, causing you to see the risks of AI, but not become so overwhelmed by them that you're just in a state of overwhelm and panic and fear. And so with that being said, let's dive right into it. So we're gonna start out with the overly naive, optimistic viewpoint. We'll call it the Zoomer view. It's those that are just zooming towards AI technological development without thinking of the consequences of this. These are the people that think, oh, AI is just a tool. If it turns bad, we can just turn it off. You know, uh, the market will just course correct us over time, or maybe we'll merge with AI and become like quasi human robots. And so the reason this viewpoint is fundamentally naive and false, I've talked to many people who are very fervent in this belief system and just First things first, we can't turn AI off. There are enough open source models, like you can just download an entire model onto your computer that if like OpenAI, all these, there's enough arm races as well. You know, you see DeepSeek and OpenAI, China and American AI arms races that there's no agreements that are gonna be had that are just gonna shut down all of AI. But that being said, we can't turn it off because of these market dynamics. We also can't turn it off because people can just install it locally now and they have the source code for it. So that's fundamentally false. And the other is that the market doesn't inherently uh, move us towards good uses of these technologies. It moves us towards the most profitable uses of these technologies. And a lot of people, I believe, have the sense that they want to do good with AI, but the market forces are so strong that they get co-opted into whatever is most profitable. And you'll see a lot of people, I've met a lot of people who are, you know, they have they want to do good and they want to be ethical in relationship to the use of AI, but they, or they even think that they're doing good with AI, but they become co-opted by market forces such as that they're doing evil in the world. They're they're or, or to put it a different way, they're contributing to causes that are causing, you know, overall net negatives in the world while maintaining the identity that they're doing good. And so this is like the most, um, difficult like trap to be in because you're in this kind of like veil of positivity and optimism without realizing the very real risks of ai you can think of this as like the mark andresens of the world the second is the doomer which is like ai is very bad over time it will destroy us we should be like really careful with ai because it has extreme risks and the power and leverage that it gives people um, is just increasing the gap of inequity in our society um, and these are just the people that say, like, let's be really careful with this stuff. It has a lot of risk that we're not talking about it and we're going towards destruction. And so you'll see this um, in a lot of different circles. And I think this is like starting to I think this is actually a more balanced view, even though it kind of tends to swing on the negative pessimism side of things. And I think the the sort of downfall of the doom review, it's not that it doesn't have an accurate view of how things are like where things are going, but that it gets stuck in this overly pessimistic, afraid, overwhelmed, panicky state, such that it's not able to actually find a truly balanced and integrated perspective. So that brings us to the Foomer view. This is the idea that AI, we're all doomed. AI is going to, we need to shut it down immediately. Uh, we should have governments have it as tight of centralized control over these technologies as possible in that there's likely a 99 percent chance of doom um we're all like we're all basically done for because ai has already reached a point of no return and again the the con here the the negative of this the uh, unhealthy side of this is that it just completely engrossed in this in this negative panicked myopic scared frightened view of things such that you you can't act agentically you can't um you can't have agency and participation and aliveness and you know purpose that causes you to to do good in the world if you're stuck in this myopic fumer view and that brings us to um the integrated approach which is what i want to propose here so this is proposed 
approach, sorry, is called the mentoring approach. And so this is kind of spearheaded by um, a guy named John Verveke, um, Sean Coyle, I believe, and his colleagues as well. The idea here is that um, we need to mentor these machines. We need to, we can't slow these down, but AI is essentially developing as a human would in that the level of cognition is, is expanding, right? We used to be AI as a level like similar to that of a kindergartner. Then we got to like fifth grade last year. Now we're approaching like college PhD level. And basically the idea is that at each stage of development, our role is to basically steward this technology such that it develops in a way that is that is integrated, that has human oriented values, human aligned values. Um, and we need to understand that like that way that AI works is similar to a lot of our models of cognitive science, of neuroscience. We need to use the best of our scientific models to understand how AI is going to continue to develop. And then we need to create these um, strategies to understand the potential risks of AI and the potential opportunities of AI and to kind of steward it, to keep it in this track where we ensure that it's that it's human oriented, that it's in, uh, that it's charging towards benefiting all human life. And that is really like the aim of this channel. I want to understand, um, I'm not in the, the deep scientific machine learning world, but from like a practical level, my goal here is to understand and discover and explore the ways in which one person can use AI to increase their quality of life, to increase their sense of meaning, their sense of purpose, their sense of agency, their sense of aliveness, and their ability to more effectively do good in the world and to actually understand and move towards truth. And so one of the things that we'll be talking about more and more on this channel is that one of the primary goods that we can do in the world is to give as many humans as much agency as possible. When someone has an agency to pursue what is meaningful to them and to align that with what is most good and what is most truthful and beautiful in this world, that is when we can you know, use AI to augment and support human flourishing. Um, but right now, I believe we're going in a direction where it's just towards, it's an AI arms race, essentially. China and America are trying to develop AI as fast as humanly possible, such that we can win this arms race. And it's leading towards us not realizing what the risks of it are. Um, and so with that being said, um, on, a, on an individual level, what we can do is start thinking about how am I using AI? Is it supporting my own agency and flourishing? And by you know using this AI and my training models that could cause harm, what are the second order, third order effects and the externalities of me using these models? And at the end of the day, it's like, how do I use AI to more effectively help me achieve my goals and to more effectively understand the way in which achieving my goals relates to the systems that I'm a part of? such that I'm like not trying to achieve goals that harm other people, right? And so um, with that being said, I want to talk about like, how do we actually embody this perspective? What does it look like to actually take this integrated perspective and live with it? Um, and so like we said, we meet machines at their different developmental thresholds. We guide AI through these key developmental stages that humans have gone through. Um, and we basically figure out what are the best ways to, you know, use AI for good in inevitably, we can't just imagine there's going to be some utopian future where the market is no longer a thing and we can just only use AI for good. We need to figure out because the market forces are the ones that are, you know, pushing AI towards the speediest, most rapid development. How do we participate and engage in these market forces in a way that steer AI towards these developmental, you know, developmentally to where we want them to go. Like, do we want AI to become human killing robots that, you know, uh, are trying to maximize and optimize something that detriments and reduces the well-being of all of us? No. So how do we shape AI towards and make sure that we're training these AI models and interacting with these AI models? Because at the end of the day, everyone that is writing something in ChatGPT or Claude or whatever is training these models in some way and it's learning. So how each individual interacts with these models will determine these developmental thresholds. This isn't some like AI machine learning scientist thing. This is like you and I. We can interact with AI 
towards, you know, pushing it towards improving our own lives and having interactions with it where it's improving others' lives. And through that, we can understand the ways in which we can use AI for good, essentially. And so with that being said, um, this is just a primer, a in a introductory video on these four perspectives. We'll be talking a lot more about this in the future. But the first things first is you have to understand what is your mission? What are your goals? What are your values in this world? Because AI is only going to amplify what's already there, right? And so if AI is going to amplify what's already there, we need to ensure that it's amplifying things that are good, not things that are bad. And that starts with the individual. It starts with you and I. We need to understand what are at, what is our individual mission in this world and then build agents to support you in, in bringing that mission to the world or build AI systems or um, all the different you know, tutorials that we talk about on this channel. That's kind of like the how. That's like, how do you build these agents? How do you build these systems? How do you actually construct um, organizations using AI that basically make it easier to level up what is good and downgrade what is bad? And so I kind of beckon you, I ask you to think about what is the good that you want to do in the world? What are your goals? What are the things that you want to move towards that will create a better future for yourself and for others? And then how could you use AI to support that vision rather than to just bring out greed and fame hunting and all these things that are just focused on, you know, how do you just make a quick buck with AI? You know, the vast majority of things I see online are here's how I like made a quick buck with AI and I'm not against making money. Everyone's got to live. We all are trying to create and, and uh, materialize our vision in the world. Um, but just think about in materializing your vision in the world, and there's going to be part of that which is making money. But what are the other parts of it that you want to upregulate, that you want to um, support, you want AI to support you in doing? For example, like I want to um, educate people on the on this this video you're right now this is part of my goals and missions is not just to teach people how to make money with ai but to also teach them how to use ai agents and systems to support them in enabling their good traits and down regulating their bad traits and so this is the first of many videos i hope you found this valuable um and i really appreciate you for watching this and uh, have a beautiful rest of your day